Hey coders, I'm Cody Seibert and welcome to another tutorial where I'm going to show you how to build a calculator app using Vue.js. So to start off, let's just go ahead and show you what we're building. So I'm just going to load up the Mac calculator, which has a kind of a grid. I guess this is like a four by five grid that has buttons. You have different operands and operators. And of course you have a display section up here. So that's what we're going to try to emulate. And I don't know if it's going to work 100% as this app does, but we're going to try to get close. So moving on, I'm kind of going to skip the setup. I basically use VCLI to set up um, this project here. And what we're going to do is just kind of modify what's already there to build out our calculator app. So to start off, let's go into the app.view file. And let's just go ahead and clean some of this up so that we only display our calculator. So I'm going to get rid of this image. And I'm also going to get rid of this um, Hello World. But instead of just deleting it, I'm just going to go ahead and rename it to calculator. And then anywhere I'm importing it, just change that the calculator. So I'll save that. That's going to crash because obviously we haven't created the calculator component. So if I go back to my components folder, I'm just going to rename Hello World to calculator. Open that up and just go ahead and gut basically everything we have so we can start fresh. And just to verify that this is working, I'll leave a little Hello World message in here and save that. Go ahead and gut the styles, gut the source, save that, and we are good to go at this point. We don't need to touch any of the other files that, I, that I'm aware of. So let's go ahead and talk about what we need to do. If we go back and look at that calculator, it has a kind of a grid structure. So I'm thinking about using CSS grid to kind of replicate that. So let's go up here, let's remove that, and let's just call this calculator. Then inside our styles, I'm going to define a new calculator class, which we can use CSS grid. So I'm going to say grid template columns. I'm going to say there's going to be four columns and I'm going to repeat them with equal width, right? So this is a way to do like percentages. So each one has the same equal percentage of each other. And then for the rows, this will kind of make sense in a second when we visualize it. For the rows, I'm just going to give it a grid auto rows. And that's going to put some spacing automatically between all of our rows. So each one should at least be 50 in height. So I'm going to save this. And what this is going to do is basically any child element of our calculator component is going to be put into a four by infinity grid. So to show that, I'll just say span um, hello. Paste that a couple times. In fact, I think it might need to be divs. Let's see. In fact, I think I forgot to say display is grid. OK, so definitely don't forget that line 19 display grid. That tells the component that it needs to be a grid CSS grid. So if you notice here, as I keep pasting new components, we're getting a four column by infinity amount of rows grid. So that's kind of a step in the right direction. And what do we need for our calculator? Well, first of all, we needed a display. I'm going to say class display. And I'll just type in some random number here. <laughs> and what we need to do is we need to make this display span the entire top four columns. So if we go down at the bottom of the style and say display, we can specify how many columns that display should take up. So I can say grid column. I want it to start at column one, and I want it to end after column four. So if I save this, that display will take up the entire first row. And to kind of demonstrate that a little bit better, I'm going to say make it red, just so we can visualize, right? And then let's just go ahead and make the font a little bit larger for all these. So I'm going to say font size of 40 pixels, just to make it a little bit easier to read. So at this point, we can start implementing the rest. So let's look and see what we need. We need a row that has AC plus minus percent and a um, divide icon. So here I'll just get rid of this and I'll say clear. I'll do plus minus, uh, I think it was percent. And then we have a divide. Let's paste it in here. So if I save that, we kind of have our first row ready to go. And now for the second row, seven, eight, nine times. I'll do the same thing, seven, 
eight, nine, and then I'll just put an X for times. So save that. Let's just go ahead and continue. Four, five, six minus four, five, six minus, and then we're going to need four more, three, or sorry, that's going to be one, two, three, I believe. One, two, three plus. And finally, we have a zero dot and equals. So I'll just do that. Zero dot equals. <clears throat> so one thing we'll notice is that the zero, I forgot to add a plus. So let me just do that. But we need the zero to take up two columns, right? So how did we do that before? We use that grid hyphen column. Um, class. So what we can do here is just say, sorry, on the zero, I'm going to say class zero, and then down in the style, I'm going to say zero is a grid column of one comma or one slash three, which will give it two columns in this. And now since all of these are kind of like buttons, let's just go ahead and give it a class button for all these. Uh, obviously, I could just give them buttons. Um, just to keep it simple though, I'm just going to give it class equals button. Go ahead and fix that zero. Go down here and I'll make a new button style. So BN, background color is equal to, I don't know, EE for now. Order one pixel solid. All right, so we're making a little bit of progress. So going back to the calculator, notice that this whole row here, or column I mean, has kind of like an orange text for the, or orange color in the background. So what I'm gonna do here is define a new class called operator. And I'll give it a background color of orange and then a text color of white. And then for any of my operators, so that includes divide, I'm gonna give it a class operator times minus plus and equals. So I'll save that and now we have the correct coloring for these operators. Let's just go back one more time and look to see if we're missing anything. Yeah, so at this point it seems pretty good. I mean, we could probably spend hours just messing around with the styles to make sure it looks good. So now that we have a decent layout going, and of course, let's just get rid of this red, make that something else. All right, so it looks a little bit better. Border, I'm still being kind of nitpicky here. The border's a little, there we go. And of course, if you don't want the, the columns to be so large, what you could do is just set a width to our calculator. So I'll give it a width of like 400 pixels and then a margin zero auto to make it centered here. Okay, so our calculator is looking a little bit more like this calculator here. I'm not going to spend too much time making it look exactly as is. <clears throat> like I don't need to text align this right or whatnot. But anyway, the next fun steps is we need to declare the logic and the bindings to our different buttons and display. So the first thing I see here is we could probably abstract this into a view data uh, property here. So let's go to our view component and declare a data function which returns something that has a display or a current set equal to an empty string. And then up here, I'm going to just interpolate that here and say current. So it's going to render whatever the current data value is. So for instance, if I say one, two, three, that's going to render out one, two, three. Or if I type hello world, that's going to type out the string. But for now, we're going to keep that blank. And then we're just going to fall back on a zero if it's not defined. And then we can kind of just go through these buttons and one by one add whatever functionality we need to it. So to start off, let's just do a click callback on the clear button, and we're going to call a function called clear. And to define functions on your view component, and notice that this is a view component, all you need to do is add a methods attribute, and then define the method that you want. So I'm going to say clear is a method, and what's going to do, it's going to reset current back to the empty string here. So if we were to have something typed in there and we clicked on the C, notice that it goes back to zero. 
So moving right along, let's go ahead and try to implement the next method, which is sign. So again, I'm just going to add a click listener to this and call a sign method. And then I'm going to go and implement that sign method here. So what do we want to do when the user clicks plus or minus? Basically, we just want to append a minus in front of here if it doesn't already exist. Or if it does exist, we just go ahead and remove it. So one way to do that is we could just say this.current is equal to this.current.careAt. This is going to be a ternary operator where we just check if the first character is equal to a minus. Then we're going to return that string without that first character. Otherwise, we're going to return that string with a minus sign appended to it. So now if we were to go and type in, notice that this just goes, and that's probably something we should try to fix. But um, if we assume that we actually have a number here, like one, two, three, four. Oops, I put it on the wrong thing. So one, two, three, four, if I save that, Notice that the plus or minus is now adding to it now. Oh, cool. So we might have to come back and just change that up a little bit. But I think for now we can move along to the percentage. So let me add a new called new one called sorry, let me add a new click callback called percent. And down here to the methods, same idea. We're just gonna add a callback function. And what we're gonna do here is basically just divide whatever number it is by hundred. So this dot current is equal to the string of Parse float this dot current divided by 100. All right, so just take the current string value, make it a float, divide it by 100, and then cast it back to a string here. So to kind of show that, let's just make current equal to like 600. And then if I click on that percentage, notice that it becomes 6. If I click it again, it should become 0. Point, or 0. 0.06. Okay, so that is working fine. Awesome. Um. So at this point, you should kind of see how easy it is to like write out your functionality. Your calculator has a particular state, and we're modifying the state as we click the different methods here. All right, so let's move along to the different numbers at this point. I think we'll leave the operators um, for once we have the numbers implemented. So to implement the numbers, basically, we need to think, what do we need to do? Every time we click on one of these, we just need to append to the end of this string, right? So that should be pretty straightforward. Let's make a method called append. And that's going to take a number as an argument. And what we're going to do is we're going to say this.current is equal to this.current plus number. And in fact, I don't like doing plus here because we're kind of doing string concatenation. So I'm going to do this.current concatenated with number. So it's more explicit that we're just joining two strings together. So now we can actually use this method we just created. If we go up to here, and for any time we have a number, I'm just going to go ahead and use that click callback. I'm going to say at click is equal to append. And then for each one, let's just go ahead and put in the string that we want to append. So 7, 8, 9, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2. All right, save that, and I forgot to do zero, so let me just go and add zero here. Let's see, so does this work? Seems like it, so let's just go ahead and add everything. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Add a zero, works fine. Um, Not sure if that's proper, but we won't worry about that right now. All right, so moving along, last thing we have for the operands is this dot. So let's just do another click callback and call it dot. So it's going to call a function called dot. And let's, of course, make sure we define a function down here called dot. And what we're going to do is very similar to append, but we only want to append the dot if it doesn't already exist. So I'm going to say this dot current. Um, if sorry, if this dot current dot index of the dot is not equal to negative one, then we don't need to append it. 
So in fact, I'm just going to say make sure that the dot doesn't exist. And if it doesn't exist, we can just say this dot append and then append the dot. And that's basically just going to call this method here with the period. So let me save this, type in some numbers, type in a dot, click some more numbers, try dotting again, and notice that it doesn't append it anymore. All right, we're making some really good progress now to the more difficult part of building a calculator app, which is the operators. So for each of these operators, we want to call a different kind of click callback. So for this one, I'm going to say divide. For times, I'm just going to say times. I'll say minus. And then for this one, I'll say add. So for those four operators, let's go ahead and declare those four methods. So divide times minus, and then we have plus, or I think we call it add. Let me check, what do we call it? Yeah, we call it add. So what we might wanna do is when the user clicks on one of those four operators, we wanna kind of set inside of our internal component state what our operator is going to be when we click the equal button. So up here, I'm going to make a new data called operator. And I'll set it to null for now. And basically, whenever we click one of these, we're just going to define the operator as a new callback function. So for each of these, it's going to take a A and B, and it's going to return some type of math that is happening between those two. So in this case, divide will be this. And then for the other ones, we're simply just going to change what the operator is doing. So this one will be a times B, this one will be a minus B, and this one will be a plus B. So I'll save that, and as we click these things, our operator is going to change depending on the last thing that we clicked. The last step is how do we actually use these, right? Basically, we can't use it until we click the equal button. So let's go over here and add a click callback to equal and make another function. And this will all make sense when we tie it together in just a second. So basically, when the user types in a number like 200, we click add. We know that the operator is going to be set to the add operator. And then when we type a new number, we need to kind of keep track of that previous and current number. So notice if I were to type a number now, it's just appending to the current. So some additional logic we need to do is I'm going to say make another one called previous, which is set to null. And then I also want to add a Boolean called operator clicked, which is going to be false. So anytime we click one of these operators, we just basically want to do operator clicked is equal to true. And then we want to set the previous equal to the current. And I could probably abstract this into a helper function since it's very, very similar logic between all of these. So let's kind of do that. I'm going to say set previous as a function, which is going to just run those two commands. And then I'm going to call set previous after all of these, right? So this.set previous. All right, so let's try that now. So if we click on 200, we click plus, we click 200 again. Um, notice that that is not working just yet, and that is because we forgot to clear out the current, right? So basically, after we've clicked operator clicked, we need to check to see if we've clicked an operator when we call that a pin method. So over here, what I can do is just say, if this.operator clicked is true, we need to say this.current is equal to an empty string, and then this.operator clicked is equal to false to kind of set it back to that empty state. And of course, we can just continuously append to the current after we set it equal to empty string. So let's try this again. We just say one, plus two, and notice that previous is one and current is set to two here. 
Now the last step is when we click equal, we want to uh, run that operator against the previous and the current. <clears throat> so what I can say is this.current is equal to this.operator, this.current, and this.previous. Basically take the current value and run the operator against the previous value. This is not going to work because this is a string and this is a string. So what we need to do first is parse that to a float. And then make sure we cast it to a string here. <clears throat> so let's try that out and see what happens. In fact, we probably want to reset previous um, after we've done that. So I'm going to set that back to null here. All right, so let's try out some of this stuff. So I'll do like 1 plus 2 equals 3 plus 5 should equal 8. Minus 8 should equal 0. Times 5 should equal 0. Plus 10 times 5 is 50 divided by 4 is 0 0.08 times 100 gives us that. Negate it, add 8, get back to 0. Um, let's say 90. Let me clear it and go to 90%. Times 100 should be 10. Or sorry, it should be 90. Um, negate that and add 10 to get negative 80. So our calculator is pretty much working. I, mean, I think there's like a bug or two. Like for instance, if you do... If you're at zero and you do plus or minus, that's kind of like a little bug. And then also, like, I think normal calculators, as you keep pressing the operators, it's going to, like, run your equal. But I'm not going to dive into kind of fixing those. I just wanted to kind of show you a really quick overview of building out a calculator app using Vue.js. And honestly, it didn't take any time at all. It's pretty straightforward. If you want to try to fix those bugs, feel free to do so in my Git repo and post a pull request. But for now, I think this is a, a good ending point for this tutorial. So if you have any questions or comments or concerns, feel free to leave some in the comment section below. And if you have any rec recommendations of future little like mini projects that I could try to build, um, again, leave me a comment or send me a tweet on Twitter. Cool. So that about wraps it up. Thanks for watching and happy coding.